Y'all got me acting crazy in here. I gotta preach. I can't, can't do all that and preach. Shoot. But God is a good God. Romans, the eighth chapter, read verse 28. I appreciate this church and this congregation and your leadership for allowing me to speak here on this morning. It's always good to come home. This is home. And y'all saw my baby and the baby that she got. Ain't that good? God is good. God is Show sure enough good. Amen. Romans 8, 28. Familiar passage, it says, For we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. For we know that all things, all of it, works together for the good. Oh, that's powerful stuff. Of them who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. This morning I want to speak to you from the topic, just let it work. <laughs> Just let it work. I, I I've been coming here for a while, and I and I know a lot of the people, and I know a lot of what some people are going through. And I listen to the prayer request, and listen to people talk about their struggles, and ask God to fix things and turn things around, and just move on our behalf. They're praying for children. They're praying for strength. They're praying for job opportunities. They're praying because they've lost people. They're praying because they're struggling and people don't know what to do. That's right, that's right. But we know that all things, are y'all hearing this thing? All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. The child of God understands that everything that happens it has a purpose. There is no pain that has no purpose. And I want to take it a step further. Every pain has a promise. What is that promise? All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Well, if I'm a child of God and I'm going through things, if I know that all things work together for the good, why am I worried? All right. Help us. Why am I distressed? Yeah. Why am I heartbroken? Why am I confused? Why do I doubt if I know that all things work together for good, why do I feel as if things are bad? All right, all right. Why do I feel as if God has forgotten me? If I know that all things work together, why am I depressed? Why is my head hung low? Why do I toss and turn? Why do I have trouble sleeping? Why do I give up? It's because we don't let the things work. All right. Help us. Help us. Help us. I want y'all to see this thing. Because as a child of God, we have a hope that other folk don't have. Amen. Let's scroll up. Let's go up. Let's scroll up when you're on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on up, go up a little bit to verse number, verse number uh, uh, four, uh, 20. Verse number 20, it says, For creation was condemned to lose its purpose, but not of its own will, but because God willed it to be so. Yet, 
there was hope. Yet there was hope that creation itself would one day be set free from the slavery and decay that it shares. For we know that that we that this verse verse 22, for we know that up to the present time all creation groans with pain, like the pain of childbirth. I want y'all to see this thing. Everybody is gonna have pain. Everybody is gonna have hurts. Everybody is gonna have moments. Where they have to grow. That's right. But the thing is, he uses the analogy of childbirth. Everybody groans with the pains of childbirth. Yeah. Any women had any kids in here? <laughs> Baby, cover your ears so you don't hear this story. <laughs> Did it hurt? Yeah. What kind of pain was it? It was a terrible, terrible pain. You're imaginable. I will never be able to relate. <laughs> but I could imagine just how painful it was. <laughs> it's like kidney stones, but worse. <laughs> Understood that that pain had a purpose. Because nobody's ever told them no. 
And if God only blessed you 24-7 and you never had any hurt, never had any kind of pain, you wouldn't be able to appreciate the good stuff. And so you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be a good steward over the blessings that God placed on your life. Some of us can't be blessed be the way we want to be blessed because we ain't been through enough to get the blessing. This is good stuff. Some of us want a good man. Amen, sisters. You want a good man, but you ain't been through enough. And so what happens is God put a good man in your face, but because you haven't been through now, you don't recognize that he's a good man. And you run that rascal off. And then you say stuff, well, there ain't no good men out here. I'm out here. And then you start trying to twist the scripture. God said, a man findeth a wife. I ain't putting myself out there. Y'all know how y'all do. <laughs> but the Bible says, man that findeth a wife find a good thing. If you ain't acting like a wife, my wife ain't found you. Just throwing that out there. If all you can act is like a girlfriend or a side chick, if that's all you know how to do, and you wonder why no man ain't find you yet, it's because the Bible says man that findeth a wife. You gotta have wifely qualities. That was extra, just throwing that out there. That was three. Thank you, paper for that one. But sometimes we can't get the blessings that we're looking for because we're not prepared for them. The good and the bad work together for your good. Well, what is your good? Your good is you're in a position to where you can appreciate the blessings that God has for your life. And when you can appreciate what God has for your life, then you can utilize the blessings that he's put on you. Because every blessing, God is looking for a result. Y'all remember the parable of the talents? The parable of the talents. And you had one man, correct me if I'm wrong, one man got five talents, one man got two talents, and one man got one talent. The one with the five talents, he went and he utilized his blessings and he got a return. And God said, because you doubled my return, what I gave you, I'm going to double that. So now you have a whole bunch. The same thing happened with the one with the two. But the person with the one, they said, well, I don't want nobody to take what I got. I don't want no. I don't want to lose what I got, so I'm gonna bury it. And, I, and and when the when the master comes back, and this thing, he tried to justify his actions. He said, "I know the master is a cruel and hard man, and if I lose what he gave me, he's gonna be mad. So I'm gonna bury it so I can give it back to him." God don't want what he gave you. He wants what he gave you and more. And so what happened when the, when, when when the master came back? He blessed those other two, but the one he said, "Hey, um." I, I, I recognize this. I gave it to you. Where's the rest of it? Because everybody else gave more. And he was like, I mean, well, I know you was like hard. Um, and like I hid it because I didn't want to get in trouble. And so <laughs> what had happened was um, <laughs> I dug a hole and I put it in there. Watch this. A lot of times you'll try so hard to hide what you have that you'll do more work to hide it than it would be to use it. <laughs> Because he sat there, he got a shovel, he dug a hole and put it in there when well, he could have just used it. It'd been a whole lot less work. <laughs> but we're afraid of what God put in us. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? We're afraid of it. And because of our fear, we don't step out and utilize the talents that God has placed in our lives. So I, I'm so happy for what I saw this morning. I saw uh, Brother Dominique, that's your name? He got up there. I've heard him read scripture and things before, but today he got up and he led a song. That's powerful stuff. Amen. Amen. And, and I appreciate Brother Stevenson for seeing that in him and pushing him to do so. Amen. See, sometimes we need a little motivation. We need a little help. And so listen, sometimes when people are pushing you to do things that you don't necessarily feel comfortable with, it may be that they see something in you that you don't see. Amen. Don't fight against it. Welcome the challenge. I'm going to say that again. Don't fight against it. Welcome the We don't welcome challenges anymore. This, I, I know, this generation, this, today's society, they don't, they don't do challenges. Anything that becomes challenging, we quit. Anything. Jobs, well, they started wanting me to do this. I, I, I don't roll like that, so I quit. I don't need this job. Relationships, 
Time to get hard, we quit. That's why the divorce rates are so high. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? We just quit. We don't, we, we, don't, we don't like challenges. We don't like anything that makes us have to work a little bit harder. But anything, anything worth having is worth working for. Anything worth having is worth fighting for. And, I can, and watch this. Your peace, if you want peace, is worth fighting for. Joy is worth fighting for. We expect God to bestow these blessings, just drop them on us and our life is good. No, baby, you got work to do. I said you got work to do. It comes through God, but you have work to do. God uses your feet. We are the body of Christ. Y'all ever thought about that? He's the head of the body, the church. What does that mean? That means if God is going to go anywhere, our feet do it. Are y'all following me on this morning? This is some good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to preach this morning. I told Lita, I said, I don't know what I'm going to preach. She said, just let God use you. And the Holy Spirit showed up. <laughs> Won't he do it? Won't he will? <laughs> but we know. We know. We. We. Know. we. Yeah. Who is the we? we. we. The children of God. Paul, Paul, the book of Romans is a powerful book. If you look through the book of Romans, Paul, it's probably Paul's most important work out of everything he's written. It's probably the most important work because throughout the book of Romans, he's explaining the, the, the necessity of salvation and how it works, how Jesus' blood cleansed us. He's explaining how everybody's on the same playing field because the churches in Rome, they were mixed churches. You had Jews and you had Gentiles. Now, I want you to think about Romans. Romans they served all kind of gods. Y'all remember Greek and Roman mythology? So they had all these different gods and all these different practices and all these different rituals that Paul had to break down and say, it's not about that. But then on the other side, you had the Jewish population who had all this Old Testament theology and thought they were better than everybody else and they believed in the circumcision and they believed in not eating certain meats and all these different rituals that they were trying to put on all the Gentiles and Paul had to break them down too and say, listen, all y'all on the same level. Never think that you're better than somebody else. Never, and never think that, you, that you're more worthy of salvation than somebody else. That's why he said in Romans 3, all have sinned. Y'all following me on this thing? Paul is making sure that we understand. Hey, you need to make sure that you know. Make sure that you know that, hey, you ain't perfect. You ain't got it no matter how hard you think, no matter how much you think, how, how beautiful you dress and how good you look when you come in here. All the church phrases you can use, how you do? I'm blessed and highly favored. <laughs> y'all know them church phrases. Y'all, y'all know it. Y'all have the the, the, uh, the church, the church hug. Because you... <laughs> you don't want to touch nobody too close. None of that stuff matter. Because when you strip it all away, it's we're all sinners. Bottom line. And so what Paul he does throughout this whole book, he's explaining, hey, you need salvation. Hey, we're not perfect. If you look at Romans, I believe Romans uh, 5, 6, 7, and 8, he's really explaining how we need this. Romans 7, I love that chapter because it's explaining, hey, I, I, I can't do everything right all the time. Amen. Anybody else feel like that? Amen. I can't. I'm, I stand up here in this pulpit, but I sin too. Amen. I can't get it. No matter how hard I try, I try so hard that next thing you know, I'm doing the thing that I did not want to do. Amen. This is Paul talking. He said the thing that I hate, that I don't want to do, before I realize it, I'd have messed up and I'm doing it now. Old people, is this you? Amen. Young people, Amen. is this you? Amen. It's everybody. And I, I, let me stop here for a second. Older generation, please make sure that the younger generation know that you ain't perfect. <laughs> Don't act. No, we ain't perfect. I can't believe. And look, look, look. I saw this. I saw this post one time. Young people think this is funny. I saw this post one time where um, somebody was like, "Yeah, we look at the younger generation. Say, I can't believe they wear those pants and they wear skinny jeans." But then they posted a, a picture of, of a group from the '70s and they had on like spandex. <laughs> and y'all, y'all judge us. For wearing skinny jeans and saggy pants and that we, we need to do better about that. 
but y'all wore like spandex and leather, and y'all wore y'all basketball shorts were all the way up here. We all are messed up. Ha! We are, we all are messed up. And young people, I need y'all to understand though. Just because they have messed up in the past, that does not make them less worthy of respect. What it does is the fact that they admit it actually makes them more worthy of respect. Because this is the thing, a lot of older, we don't like, because I'm getting older, we don't like to tell the younger people what we've been through because we're afraid that they're going to look at us different. But actually, young people, what they, they want to know that you mess up so they can know that you can relate to them. Nobody's going to go to somebody. If they're struggling with something, they ain't going to go to somebody who never struggles. I want you to think about this. God himself, I want y'all to think about this. God himself created man. And man continuously messed up and turned their back on God. They kept following the sin. And God would get so mad. Why would they do such a thing? He wanted to destroy folk. And Moses would be like, hey, God, no, don't destroy him. Please don't kill him. And God is like, oh, Moses, you better get your folk. <laughs> Because God could not understand how somebody he created could turn on him. He could understand why the pull of sin was so strong that they turned. And so you know what God did? God understood that he couldn't understand, and so he became us so he could. Y'all ever really thought about that? Jesus was God trying to understand his creation. He said, okay, okay, I'm getting mad at them, and, but they keep doing it, so it must be something that's like a strong pull that's pulling them away. Let me become them so I can understand why they keep doing what they're doing. So Jesus was God saying, I get it. And watch this. So if God had to get down on the same level with his creation, why can't you get on the same level with your kids? They woke up, didn't they? They woke up, didn't they? What was I actually talking about, though? What was the point? Um, <laughs> I don't even know. But we know that all things work together for the good of them, watch this, that love the Lord. You gotta love God. It says you gotta love God. This thing, all this stuff is activated by your love for God. Well, question, what does that look like? Jesus said, if you love me, you'll do what? So you sitting here living any kind of way of life that you want to live, and you don't understand why things ain't working for good? It's because you don't love them. Just because you say you love them, don't mean you love them. I can tell my wife I love her all I want to, but if I'm going around with every other girl that walks past, it don't matter what I got to say, my actions are saying different. And we claim we love God with our mouth, but our lives say the exact opposite. If you go up, and I'm, I'm shutting this thing down. If you go up in this thing, it talks about how we, we are slaves to our human nature. It's our nature to please self. It's our nature to do certain things because as humans, that's what we do. But he says you have to Cut that off because there is now, therefore, no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the And so I have to make a conscious decision not to walk after the flesh. I have to walk after the spirit, meaning I can't go anywhere unless the spirit goes first. He is my guide. I'm not going to do everything perfect, but as long as I'm following the spirit, I'll end up in the right place. The problem is we don't follow the spirit like we need to. We'll start off following the spirit, but we'll get distracted and we'll go off this way. And the spirit way up there saying, where'd you go? And that, and this is the thing. Once the spirit walk off, then you got to run a whole lot faster to catch up. And a lot of us are playing catch up with our lives because we have let the spirit get away from us. And now we're at a place where we're ready to listen. And so we're running. Spirit, I'm trying to get to you. And you're trying to
trying to figure out why you're so tired and why it's so difficult to do the right thing and why it's so hard to be active in the church and find my place is because the spirit has gotten too far ahead of you. Are y'all hearing this thing? And so we have to get rid of that human nature side. And this is the way you do it. The spirit has to become the most important thing in your life. You got to understand why you're here. You have to understand why you're here. If you go up, he says, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Meaning you have to be willing to suffer because that's what Jesus had to do. I want you to see this. Jesus, the Bible said, let's just read it. Let's read it. Go up to verse number, I think it's around 16, that area. Verse number, I'll find it. Yeah, scroll on up, scroll on up. We're still in Romans 8. We're still in Romans 8. We're going to read, start reading verse 17. We'll, see, we'll start at 16, like I said. Verse 16, it says, God's spirit joins himself to our spirits to declare that we are God's children. The spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are his children. God, he wants to claim us. God is not a deadbeat dad. He wants to claim us. And so his spirit bears witness with our spirit and declares, these are mine. Just in case you forgot who you belong to, God's spirit reminds you. When you come into the house of God, when you read the word, it reminds you who you belong to. And then he says, 17, and since we are his children, we will possess the blessings that he keeps for his people. And we will also possess with Christ what God has kept for him. Because we are the children of God, every spiritual blessing, every blessing that's specifically created for his people, we receive. Amen. Everybody's blessed, but everybody doesn't get every spiritual blessing. Breath in your body is a blessing. Anybody on earth gets that blessing. But prayer is just for his people. Heaven, just for his people. Peace that has this understanding just for his people. Y'all get what I'm saying? That it's, there's some things, everybody, listen. Uh, there's some things that you do for everybody's kids because you're a good person, but there's some things that you only do for your kids. I may bring, I may give a kid a baby doll from the dollar store for Christmas just because I'm nice and they'll be excited about it. But I will only get my kid a PS4. I don't know what y'all play no more. I'm old. What y'all play now? That was right. You ain't spending five, $500 on a phone for a kid that don't belong to you. Now, you may let them use your phone. <laughs> she said, uh-uh, not even that. But there's some things that you will only do for you people that belong to you. And God blesses the world because he's God of all creation. But there's some blessings that are reserved for his people. And so he says because we're his children, we get those blessings. And watch this. He takes a step further. We also get the blessings that are reserved for Jesus himself. We are put on the same level with the son of God. The perfect one that did no wrong. We are on the same level with him. Whatever he gets, yeah. we get. Yeah. We get the same inheritance even though we are dirty, filthy, low-down, dirty sinners, and he's perfect. We get the same thing. Amen. But watch this. But this is how you have to do it. This is how you do it. This is where, where we all get, we get twisted up in the body of Christ. Um, verse number uh, 18. I mean, the end of that verse, number 17, he says, But we have to share in Christ's sufferings. So that we can also share in his glory. Then he says, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time ain't worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. If you ain't willing to suffer, you ain't worthy of glory. Amen. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Amen. If you ain't willing to suffer, you ain't worthy of glory. Because your glory is a direct result of the suffering that you went through. No suffering... No glory. So if we want to receive what God has for us, we got to be willing to go through the pain of the cross. Christ said, Christ said, 
anybody that come after me got to deny themselves, take up your cross in it. Whatever Christ got to do, had to do, we got to do. Christ had to be talked about. Can you be talked about? Christ had to be spit on. Could you be spit on? Christ had to be beaten. Could you be beaten? Christ had to die. Could you die? He had to, and he had to die for something that he did not do. Could you let somebody lie on you and you take the take the pain for somebody else? Could you do it? I know I struggle. <laughs> I know myself. And I know some of y'all too. Y'all looking at me crazy. Y'all struggle just like I do. For we know that the uh, that some of this person aren't worthy to be compared to the Lord that shall be revealed. But for we know that all things work together for the good that love Him, and this is it, and that are the called according to His purpose. Your calling makes things work. Your calling now. If you ain't found a purpose in the kingdom of God, if you ain't put your hand to the plow. And you're operating in a gift that God has placed in your life. Don't expect for all things to work together for good. Some of us, we show up here like we're doing God a favor. We get here 15 minutes late. And if service go a little too long, we out. Deuces. And you, you surely ain't going to see us on Sunday evening or Wednesday night. Why? Why? Because we don't understand our calling and a lot of us honestly are afraid of our calling. We're afraid to work because we're afraid of failure. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? We're afraid to work because we're afraid of failure. And so because because the thing is we've messed up before and we feel as if we can't get it right. But that's why he prefaced this, 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 uh, this chapter with there is there no condemnation. Listen, don't condemn yourself. Because Christ doesn't condemn you. Amen. And don't let anybody else condemn you. Because Christ doesn't condemn you. As long as you're in Christ Jesus and you're walking after the spirit, you end up where God has called you to be. Because you can't follow the spirit and end up in the wrong place. The spirit of God is your guide. And if you get these things in check, everything works together. For the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Let us be standing. Let us be standing. Let us be standing. I don't know who I was talking to this morning. But more so, I don't know who God was talking to this morning. But if you're in here this morning and you've been hurting and you've been trying to figure out why this is happening and why that is happening, I hope you leave with some hope this morning. God is trying to prepare you for your purpose and your destiny. He's trying to put you in a position to where you can be a good steward and you can enjoy the blessings that he has on your life. A lot of times God blesses us, but we can't enjoy it because we're too afraid of stuff that's happened in the past. We're afraid that the bottom is going to fall out because we met, we've done people. So y'all remember um, Joseph and his brothers, Joseph, uh, his brothers did him so wrong, so wrong, sold him. He went through all this stuff later on. They're, they're, they're in the palace, and they don't know it's Joseph yet, but they, 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 they're in the palace, and Joseph feeds them, and they're having a big celebration because Joseph has forgiven them. He's forgiven them, and they're having this big celebration, but the brothers, because they have messed up so, so many times in the past, they're afraid that something bad is going to happen. They can't enjoy the meal. Don't put yourself in a position to where you can't enjoy the blessings that God has on you. The hand of the Lord wants to protect you and wants to provide for you. But some of us, we can't enjoy the, our, we can't enjoy our salvation because we're afraid of what we've done. We got to move forward and move and move past, past it and not look back. Looking back, you can't move forward looking backwards. And so if you're in here on this morning and you've been struggling and you've been fighting sin and you've been, but you've been questioning God and trying to figure out why is this happening? We want to pray for you and give you some answers and give you some strength. Because in relationship with God, that's where the answers are. In relationship with God, that's where peace is and that's where joy is. 
And so we need to pray for you. If you're not a child of God, man, you ought to be. That's the best decision you will ever make in your life. Becoming a child of God. When you, when you get baptized, you become a child of God. You become a friend of God. You become a brother in Christ. You become a brother of Christ. You get a new family. You The old man dies. You're born again. Like all these things happen. Why would you not want that peace? Well, my family, they, 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 they brought up in another denomination. I'm scared I'm going to make them upset. Jesus said, I came not to bring peace, but a sword. And he says, sometimes I'm going to have to split you up from your mother and your father, your brother and your sister, just so you can get close to me. That's in Matthew 10. Go read it. Nothing, nothing comes before your relationship with God. I love my wife, but if me, if my wife got between me and God, she'd have to go. Amen. <laughs> because nothing, nothing, nothing is greater. Not your job, not, the, not your family, not your money. Nothing is more important than being in relationship with God. Some of us have heard these sermons. We've been coming visiting for the longest. We, some of us have been brought up in the church. But we still haven't been baptized and given our lives over. What you waiting on? Uh, uh, the Bible said Paul, Paul, he got converted and Jesus spoke to him and all that stuff. Why are you kicking against the priests? He got converted in his mind. But then the Bible says, why tearest thou? Arise and be baptized. I don't care how convicted you are in your mind. Baptism still has to happen. The water is where, where all this stuff takes place. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that isn't shall be damned. That's Mark 16, Acts chapter 2. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That spirit that I've been talking about that leads you, you get it in the water. Please, don't leave here the same way you came in. Come to Jesus this morning. If, if you stand up to the invitation, please come as we sing this song. I'm going through, oh Lord, I'm going through, oh, I don't care what the world decides to do. I made up my mind, and I ain't going to turn around, and I started with Jesus, and I'm going, I'm going, I'm going through, oh Lord, I'm going through. I don't care what the world decides to do. You know I made up my mind. And I ain't going to turn around. And I started with Jesus. And I'm going to do. So don't run too swift. And don't run too fast. Together we can make it at home at last. Said I won't look back. You just keep heaven in your view. And I started with Jesus. And I'm the Lord, I'm going through, oh Lord, I'm going through, I don't care what the world decides to do, you know I made up my mind, and I ain't going to turn around, and I started with Jesus, and I'm going through.